We are in Tehran outside the Imam Khomeini Film Institute. And you know what? This is actually the original car which Imam Khomeini came with when he came from uh, the airport after landing. It has been preserved here for years. And as you can see, it is still the same beautiful car. On the right side is where Imam Khomeini was sitting. The, mass, the people were all over the car. And Imam Khomeini was sitting here when the car drove him from the airport to the graveyard. So this is the this is the place of the Khomeini. Yeah, you talk. this is the place of the Khomeini. He was living in here, and also he was sitting in here, sitting in here talking to uh, inviting the people to talking to people. And then uh, anybody was come to in here, and he was talking. Even the uh, prime minister, former prime minister of the Russian, uh, Shevardnadze, he came in here, and he, he was sitting, he, he was sitting, yeah, sitting he was here. Sitting here, and he spoke with the Khomeini. Uh, had a, also, he couldn't sit in the chair no. on the land, and he was too, he needed to sit in the car, yes. so sit in the chair, but right. no chair, only right. sit in the land, and I spoke with the community. He, and he was sitting in that sofa? Yes, he was sitting in that sofa, and the, his, his place, yeah. with a two-bedroom, small room, and he rented this house yeah. for twelve dollars per month. Iran has now Norge valgt å gjenopprette de diplomatiske forbindelsene. Det betyr at vi også ønsker et utgivet økonomisk, handelsmessig og kulturelt samarbeid. Og det er klart at det som for mange fremstår som en unik norsk kompetanse, det er nettopp vår teknologi på dypvannsboring og på helse-, miljø- og sikkerhetsstandardene generelt sett. Og dette har interessert Iran. As Norwegian gas partners in Sok. Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, it's now my privilege to introduce the opening statements of His Excellency Ola Oxelsen, our Minister of Petroleum. The opening statements will be presented by Mr. Gunnar Gjelde, Deputy Director General in the Ministry of Petroleum, who is working with the international agenda in the Ministry. Please, Mr. Gjelde. The political situasjonen i Iran ble jo fortløpende vurdert i utenriksdepartementet, men dette er en holdning som regjeringen samlet står bak, nemlig at det bør oppmuntres til både handelsmessige og forretningsmessige, økonomiske og kulturelle forbindelser mellom disse to landene. Og slik som jeg ser utviklingen, så burde dette kunne bidra faktisk til en god demokratisk utvikling i dette landet. 
den norske regjering mener at demokratisk utvikling og respekt for grunnleggende menneskerettigheter, miljø og så videre, tjenes best ved at den innleder et godt bilateralt samarbeid og ikke ved isolasjon. Hallo! 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 of our country is very positive. We have lots of challenges and negative things, but at the same time we have more positive things. You can't claim that everything that exists here in Iran would be uh, uh, positive, but we can claim certainly and strongly that the average of our country is uh, quite positive and uh, quite uh, high compared to uh, the developing countries or of countries similar to us. Well, I guess that this is a very uh, important project in the context of uh, uh, the Iranian uh, plan to export gas to various uh, parts of the world, including uh, its neighbors who are deficit in gas and also to Europe. Uh, you know that Iran is located uh, in an area where uh, in one side there is the Persian Gulf, the other side is the Caspian Basin, which are both energy rich. So once uh, you take north-south or south-north axis, it's, we call it producer axis. And in the west and uh, east part of Iran are consumers. So west-east or east-west axis is the consumer axis. So Iran here as uh, a major producer of uh, oil and also a major uh, uh, gas country uh, can play the role of uh, distributing energy to the areas where uh, gas or oil are deficit. Built. More I am informed about the political and cultural affairs of the country. I would like you to ask uh, Mr. Yatta a first question, is it possible? Yeah. What do you see in Mr. Yatta the relationship between Khamenei and Khatami? I think ببینید روابط رو من فکر میکنم که چارچوب قانونی تعیین میکنه. I believe that there is a legal framework which designates this relation. و شما میدونید در قانون اساسی ایران قدرت تقسیم شده است. And as you know in the Islamic Republic Constitution the power is divided. و قوای سگانه به طور 
جداگانه از یکدیگر فعالیت میکنن and the three powers are working separately from each other طبیعیه که اختلاف نظر یک حرف جدیه it's natural then uh, some uh, differences exist and it seriously exists و ولی روابط شخصی بین نامزم رهبری و رئیس جمهور روابط خوبی but the personal relation between the leader his excellency the leader and the president is a good relation i'm glad to hear all this good news میگم خیلی خوشحالم که این خبر خوب میشنم i would like to ask a second question uh, how do you see the possibilities to ease up uh, some laws to make uh, investment in Islam Republic more attractive. ما مراقبی می که از راه های جدی نجات اقتصاد کشور سرمایه گذاری خارجی و این از مشکلات روزایی بوده که ما همه نتونستیم توفیق خوبی در اون حوزه بشته باشیم بخشیش به خاطر مسائل فرهنگیه Some part of it is because of the cultural problems and some because of the historical record of the country and some because of the uh, legal problems. The Islamic Republic of Islam has been doing a lot of work in this country. In recent years, in the sixth parliament, where you can see more uh, reformists in the parliament, the reformists have made a lot of reports to uh, remove these obstacles. Because this is one of the problems, one of the uh, programs which was promised by Mr. Khatami himself. هنوز خیلی موفقیتی به دلایل مشکلاتی که در قانون گذاری وجود داره به دست نیاورد. امیدواریم که باز هم تلاش کنیم تا این از این نقطه نظر ما توفیق جدی پیدا کنیم. Your Excellency Mir Moyesi, head of NIOC, could you give us some thoughts about where NIOC will be the next five to ten years from now, please? Yes, we can discuss about this matter from several point of view. First. about the production of oil and gas, that uh, what is the objective of NIOC and goals to uh, produce uh, the oil and gas in the next uh, five years. Uh, as you know, we are, as a member of uh, OPEC organization, uh, all the prediction for demand uh, from OPEC shows that the share of OPEC uh, within the uh, within the world will be increased. Why did uh, Total decide to come to a little island in uh, Askish? Anyway, we. We was looking for a place in uh, in Iran where we could uh, install our logistic base, and uh, for us uh, we found this island uh, not so far from uh, our field and not so far from Dubai too. And uh, the advantage of uh, Kish, it's a free land, it's a free land, a, zo a free zone. So it's possible for us to bring the material and the equipment we need for our operation from Dubai and uh, to send it on the rig uh, with our boats. So uh, it was a good opportunity for us to, uh, to build and install our uh, logistic base in Kish. At the same time, for the Iranian uh, people and the government, it was an opportunity to develop the, uh, the business in this, on this island. 
And uh, Tull is one of the largest oil companies in the world. So uh, to be here on Kish uh, proves that it's uh, safe and it's uh, okay to be in this area. Yeah, here there is no problem. Uh, it's very safe, of course, and uh, we have a good uh, relationship with the local people. And uh, everybody try to, uh, to help us to uh, develop our business here. And uh, we are very happy uh, to be here at the moment, and we, I think we found a good solution. With the recent opening of a new licensing round offshore Iran, companies have the chance to license up to eight different blocks off in, in, in the Persian Gulf. This has generated a lot of interest from companies and we've seen that there's a great deal of interest in the prospectivity of the area. As you know, we have finalized five blocks in the first round of the tender, and uh, now in the second round, we faced uh, more than 20 companies. They have been participating in the data room up to now, and uh, hopefully we think it is going to be continued in the future up to 11th of March and uh, there is some companies are waiting for the dating for the room and uh, uh, generally we think uh, this part of Persian Gulf it is very attractive and the prospects that uh, available in these blocks encouraging companies to uh, participate same as before and maybe even better. How is the cooperation with the Norwegian oil industry going? We have started a very uh, close and very uh, good uh, situation in cooperation with Norwegian uh, oil companies. As you may know, uh, the first companies that we signed the exploration contract was North Hydro for Anoran block and uh, also uh, we are very interested with the other Norwegian companies and oil companies with Estatoil especially now Estatoil in uh, South Park gas field and they have participated in the bids for 11 and 12 phases and now they are discussing with Petro Parts for uh, taking some part of uh, six, uh, seven, and eight phases of this uh, huge gas field. Also, Estatoil is participating in developing the uh, South Pars oil field that the tender document have been issued three months ago and uh, apart from this investment and developing uh, projects we are very good and close relationship with Estatol. By the experience that we have I prefer at first to have a very good uh, picture of the prospects it means uh, after the completion of the seismic survey data acquisition, we are going to have uh, the interpretation. And based on the interpretation, we are going to define some new blocks for the exploration. Uh, of course, Norex company has a very good uh, collaboration with us. And he, uh, it does a very good job in uh, Persian Gulf and Oman Sea. And uh, I think that the job is done very professionally. And uh, according to our agreement, uh, they will also benefit from the sale of this uh, data and information to oil companies price of oil has been fluctuating enormously in the last couple of years and uh, even though the overall need for oil and gas is expected to grow the price is very unpredictable in this situation two things are important for developing the oil business large reserves and low production costs this is exactly what Iran has to offer it means uh, after the completion of the seismic survey data acquisition, 
we are going to have uh, the interpretation. And based on the interpretation, we are going to define some new blocks for the exploration. For uh, also receiving the different ideas, we have uh, some agreement with different companies uh, for doing the study for some part of the Persian Gulf on the one sea. For example, we have an agreement with Statoil, it's a Norwegian company, uh, for a joint study in the Strait of Hormuz and Oman Sea close to the Pakistan border. And it's on processing now. And uh, also we have another contract with the Repsol, it's a Spanish company, for another part for the Persian Gulf. And also we have another contract with uh, Edison Gas, it's an Italian company. Uh, also, some part uh, of the uh, Persian Gulf are, uh, is going to study in future. And we hope after a few months, six, eight months, we could uh, receive the result of this joint study. And based on that, we are going to open some blocks for exploration.